welcome to the With Clarity and Purpose podcast with your host, Janet Borrego. Each week, I bring you an inspiring person or message to empower you to live life on your terms so you can be who you want to be, do what you are meant to do, and have the life you deserve to have. We will provide you with practical and cutting-edge approaches to continue getting clarity and direction on your path, mastering your mindset, and gaining confidence to tap into your inner wisdom so you can live on purpose. One thing every successful individual, leader, and entrepreneur have in common is a consistent morning routine. Having a simple, easy-to-implement routine enables you to start your day with a sense of purpose, accomplishment, clarity, and direction. For this reason, I have prepared for you a free guide with an easy to follow five minutes morning routine and a tracking template where you can document your progress day by day. I've been receiving messages from some of you already telling me how this habit has transformed your days for the better. Download this five minutes morning routine right now by clicking the link on my show notes so you can start your day on purpose. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of With Clarity and Purpose. I am so excited for today's episode because I have a very special guest today. Our guest is Sonny Lamba from Canada, from Toronto, Canada. How are you, Sonny? <laughs> I am so good. And thank you so much. I am so excited because this is my first time being a guest oh on someone God. else's podcast are you serious y'all yes. and she's an expert on podcasting because let me tell you sony is the host of the flow authentic me podcast and she's also a coach inspiring women to transform their self-image and claim their power as i mentioned she lives in toronto canada and she is such a powerful woman you have to follow her on instagram we are going to share her contact information but you're such an inspiration sony and i'm just so excited to have you here today thank you so much and i love your energy and your <laughs> podcast like your big smile i i don't watch your video podcast i always listen to them yeah. but your smile radiates through the voice like oh, I can see you're it. so sweet <laughs> i really appreciate you thank you <laughs> And I'm sure the listeners are like, okay, she lives in Canada, Janet lives in Houston. How did they meet? Which is perfect to introduce the topic for today's podcast. The topic, is, the topic for today's episode is investing in yourself. So Sonny and I invested in this program called Digital Course Academy because we wanted to learn how to properly create, market, and sell our first digital course ever. In this program, in this Digital Course Academy, they had the opportunity to connect with accountability partners. So immediately after seeing Sonny's description of what she does, I'm like, I need to reach out to her because she sounds super inspiring. And honestly, that's how we connected. We were meeting on a week to week basis to be accountability partners and keep each other accountable in this digital course creation process. So I'm yes. so thankful, Sonny, to have connected that way. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think it really helped me stay focused on the program. And I totally believe in accountability. Me too. And of course, investing in yourself. I oh mean, if we didn't invest in that program, we wouldn't be doing this together. Exactly. That's right. And yeah. I, <laughs> I love it, Sonny. And even before getting deeper into investing in yourself and in ourselves, I want you to give a quick overview of your background. Where were you born? How did you move to Canada? Like, tell us all about Sonny. Oh, wow. So I am originally from India. I was born in New Delhi, the capital of India, and I moved to Canada 21 years back. Wow. Um, my family mo moved, basically the whole family, we moved together. I actually, so my story is I lost my mom at the age of 14. Oh, I didn't know. And uh, 
I kind of became a mini mother to my younger siblings and uh, the challenges and all, but it really looking back in hindsight made me into this person who is caring and nurturing and very strong and resilient. So even though like no one can fulfill that gap, that loss of the mother in my life, but I do now that I have gone through my healing process, I realized that it was my journey to make me into this person today who is now helping others to step into their power. So I lost my mother. Um, I became the mini mother because my older sister moved to Canada around the same time when, when mom was gone. And I ended up taking care of my younger brother, sister, going to university, wow. doing part-time education, um, sorry, part-time, some kind of job. I was tutoring kids because we never had enough money. So I was yeah. tutoring other kids, running the household, doing everything. And then finally, um, my sister was able to apply and our whole family moved to Canada. This was right after 9-11 happened. Wow, really? So it's, yeah, so it's been a while. And uh, after that, I came here, went back to college, did my second degree in psychology because that's something human behavior has always yeah. intrigued me. Like, I really want to learn and understand what's going on behind this behavior, but what's the, what's the background, what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I did a second degree and uh, I was working in a job, which I did not enjoy. Yeah. And finally, five years ago, I decided to quit my job because I was, wow. the, I was the most unhappy person. And I am someone who always tells others don't complain, do something about oh it. Stop God, crying about things. Yeah. And then I became that person who was constantly complaining about my job. And I realized, but bills had to be paid. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful to my husband because he's like, we can handle with my job. If you're not happy, quit. He's like, just quit that. and yeah, figure it nice. out. Figure it out. So that was five years ago. And then I kind of dipped my toes into different things, tried different things, but I always knew that I want to inspire people and I want to help people. That's always been a dream. And here I am now. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love it, Sonny. I think I share, you know, a lot of commonalities on that, commonalities on that, even in the integrity piece, right? Of telling people, hey, do not complain, hey, pursue your purpose. And then you are here, right? Recognizing and having the awareness that you need to be the example so others can see, you You know, you are the way shower in, yeah. in, a, in a particular way. So I, I love that you took that leap of faith and that your husband was super supportive. I think that's so important. I love that. So you transitioned literally from your corporate career to entrepreneurship. And I love that about you because I bring a lot of people that have done it here and that are working on their purpose. What was about entrepreneurship that really caught your attention? I mean, as you transition from corporate to entrepreneurship, what is the thing that you love the most about that journey? It is so interesting that when you start something, you really don't know mm -hmm. where you're going. And I think yes. that's what it was with me. It was every day, a new discovery. Yes. When I quit my job, my goal was number one, not waking up in the morning. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> number two, spending more time with my son because I felt the problem was that I was not fulfilled in my job. Yeah. I felt this is not me. What I'm doing is like, I have way more way more that I can contribute and do. And what I'm doing here is just not enough. And I'm paying someone else to take care of my son while I'm sitting here in this office unhappy. Yeah. So my goal at that time, I am not kidding, was literally not wake up in the morning and spend more time with my son. That's how it started. Interestingly, today I'm a morning person. I love my morning. Oh my God. I know. I see you in Instagram all the time. 6.20, I finish my morning routine and I'm like, I just love it. And that's what happens when you're doing something that your purpose aligns with. Oh, with I my job, it. I hated it. So I didn't want to wake up. 
Uh, anyways, coming back to your question, I started saying, okay, you know what? I need to make money something. So I jumped into direct sales because that was the first thing that showed up on an ad on Facebook. Yeah. Seriously. So I jumped into direct sales. Then I kind of went into network marketing. But the two things I enjoyed when I was doing these was in both the things was coaching and mentorship. Yeah, totally. Both of those things gave me that opportunity coach others, to lead others, to guide them, to hold their hand. And that's when I knew this is what I wanted. This is, and I had the psychology background. I knew that this is something I've always been interested in. So that's what got me into entrepreneurship. Basically what I really like about it is the freedom, freedom of my own time. I'm not stuck like today is a beautiful day. And I thought after recording this podcast, I'm going to go to the lake. (laughs) <laughs> you know That's and I'm so gonna nice. sit there and do whatever I have to do I'll take my laptop and I'll work there there is flexibility the freedom yeah. yeah that freedom is definitely something that really pulled me towards it oh my god I love it Sonny and as you mentioned even to gain clarity on the path you decided to invest in yourself first and I imagine one of those things what that was that direct sales and network marketing, was that the first investment you did in yourself as you were entering this journey? It's really funny, actually. So that was the first investment, yes. But I didn't look at it as investment into myself. Ooh. I looked at it as investment into a business. Oh, okay, okay. So my first direct sales company I joined, the investment was $15,000. Yeah. It was a big block. Yes, 15, yes, yes, totally. But I looked at it as setting up a business. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, they're going to give me all the tools. They're giving me the products. They're giving me everything, the training, everything. So I'm, they're giving me the systems, everything. So I'm actually investing in a business. And it was an easier decision. Fast forward, I had to come to a point where I'm like, I need clarity. Yes. My first big investment in myself was with a clarity and purpose coach. Oh my God. Can you believe oh my that? God. It wasn't me, y'all. You're saying. <laughs> yes, right? Can you believe that? And uh. that was which was harder, I think, because before that, I always thought I'm investing into the business. I'm investing into the mm, business. In something else outside of you. Outside of wow. me. And so to answer your question, yes, into the business was the first investment, but really into me was way after that. I love it. What what would you say was the biggest fear that you had to overcome to really take that leap of faith and invest in yourself? I think the biggest fear was that my business is not making any money, so I cannot invest in myself. And then, so this is a funny story. We were looking for a school for my son at that time, and my husband wanted a private school. And I was like, it's okay, just put him in a public school. And we were having this conversation, a discussion, what's the pros and cons and everything. And he said something. He said, if we invest in him today, that's going to give him, you know, a reward later. We are going, he's going to get a benefit. The return on investment. The return, right? And he said that. And that is the same time when I was struggling with that I need a coach or I need something because I'm feeling stuck and I need to really work on myself. And I was reading all the books and stuff. So I was investing in books, yeah. small things. I invest, I did invest in a, another membership, which was $20 a month. So small things I was investing in already, but I knew I, I needed big, I needed something big. So I was going through that and we were having this conversation and he said, if we invest in him today, he's going to get a return later. Oh, and it just beautiful. clicked right away. I was like, yeah. I mean, I went to school. My parents invested in me. I went to university as, an, as a mature adult student while I was pregnant. I was in university. I invested in myself. So how was that okay? And this is not okay. Oh, that's a big one, Sonny. And that gave me that big shift. That Ooh. big shift that I cannot wait to make money in my business, to invest. I need to invest first, which is then going to give me the money in my business and give give me that return. So I went ahead and I found myself a clarity coach because that's when I was struggling with my network marketing company. I wasn't happy. 
some some aspects of it were working, but I didn't feel aligned with it. And that's when um, I got the clarity that this is what I want to do. It really helped me. Wow. What a big mindset shift. And I totally agree, Sonny. Um, there was a time where I had a clarity call with someone and this someone, he didn't know if he wanted to invest in a hundred thousand MBA or not. Right. And I offered him my service, which was like few thousand. It wasn't something crazy or anything. And it's interesting because he decided to go with the option that he wasn't even sure about, which was investing on an MBA that costs a hundred thousand, like anything else, you don't have a, you don't have certainty on the outcome, but because it's so much more socially acceptable, exactly. people buy into it, even though when you look at it from an objective perspective, it doesn't make any sense. Why you wouldn't invest in yourself in gaining clarity to see if that's the right path for you. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it just blows my mind. It it definitely is. Uh, When I look back, of course, you know, um, education played a big role in where I am today. But if I look at my schooling and then my first degree I did, and then my second degree I did in psychology, and then I did psychology. And if I look at all that, it was... Yes, it was a big investment. But if I look at the return on investment, I think I got the biggest return from investing in myself in the coaching programs and all the other things that I'm doing in my personal development. That really helped me a lot. I love it because it is true. The educational system, hey, it has gotten me where I am. And there is a point that you got to start learning how to think rather than being told what to think. Yeah. which honestly, when I did my engineering degree, I was being told what to think in a way. You know, I asked myself a couple of questions, but I didn't know better in that stage yeah. in my life. And after I finished studying and I started my corporate job, that's when I started to question so many things yeah. that I used to believe in the past. Yeah. And that's when investing yourself starts making so much more sense because we need help. Sometimes people are afraid of asking for help because they believe that maybe they are not good enough. You know, they need to do it by themselves. But the reality is like no one by ourselves have have done something big, right? We always ask for help. And that's where investing comes from also. Yeah, totally. And I also think that I did that you know, buy small books that I'm going to get it through the books, just reading the books and buy small programs or free programs. I was always looking for free programs. But one thing I realized that when I actually signed up with a coach and then uh, since then I have done many programs, different things. Yes. (laughs) I was showing up because I had paid money for this. I better show up. (laughs) And it really made me think that it's exactly like when I went to university as a youth, And my dad was paying. I was skipping classes and going for movies. Oh, that's a big one. Because your dad was paying. You're like, whatever. It doesn't come from me. Wow. Yeah. But when I was working, I was pregnant and I was going to university and I was paying for the university from my pocket. (laughs) I was showing up at every class at 9 p.m. with this big belly. I was showing up (laughs) because I'm paying for this. (laughs) Wow. It makes a huge difference when you invest in yourself and you know that, okay, you know, I'm paying money for this and for exchange of this information or for this transformation, I better do the work. Yeah. I better show up. I love it. And I think a coach, back to your point, is the biggest accountability partner. And it's someone whose only agenda is your growth. And it's very action oriented. So at least with my coaching, I always give homework to my clients, you know, (laughs) right? Because that's where the action starts. It's not doing the call. Yes. Amazing. You showed up. What happens after the call is a big part of the transformation. Yes. Yes. I always say that I'm like the biggest transformation or growth happens between those two coaching sessions. I love it. That time, you know, so I agree with that. That's so beautiful, Sonny. Um, 
I remember I was in network marketing tool in two different companies, which a lot of people may not know. But whenever you're seeking clarity, hey, you're going to try anything and everything yes. to see yeah. what works and what doesn't. And it didn't work out for me, but I do respect people who are in network marketing and I mean, all about it. The first training that I invested in, I remember back in 2013, I had started my corporate job. And before that, I went back to Cuba to visit my family after 12 years of not seeing them. There was a 12 years gap where my mom and I didn't see our family in Cuba. I know it was just her and I. She was afraid to go back because we had asked for political asylum in the United States. So it was a little bit dangerous, but later on they gave us permission, which was great. And we went to Cuba and my uncle hands me a Tony Robbins book and also an NLP book in Spanish. And I'm like, wow, this is all about mind and behavior. I love this. And I remember the year after there was a Tony Robbins event coming on, Unleash the Power Within. Uh, And I'm like, oh, I really want to do this. I've never done anything like this. It was like $500 for four days, which is not bad at all, right? It's one of his intro courses. Yeah. And I remember it was in Dallas. I had never traveled four hours and a half. I had never gone to Dallas And I remember, okay, I'm going to try inviting people because I don't want to go by myself. And then I start inviting people and they're like, so you are using four vacation days. You're paying money to be there and learn. I mean, are you crazy? And I'm like, hey, if no one sees it, I'm going to see it for myself. Sony, I swear. I was like, I'm going to show up by myself. I'm going to make friends. I'm going to build a network. And I did that. Yeah. Uh, no one came with me. I went by myself to Dallas. I met one of the people who I, who I started getting involved in network marketing. And from network marketing, I went to be certified as an NLP. Like all the dots make sense. When you look yeah. back, you start connecting them. Would you agree? Same. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. And I love the network marketing industry. It didn't work out for me. I had some big success in the beginning, but then I wasn't aligned. But one thing yeah, I'm grateful to that industry is for getting me into personal development. Yes. Oh my God. That's a big one. It is so true though. I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And, and going back to that investment. So my first clarity and purpose coach. And then since then I have invested in so many programs. I've invested 10,000 and US dollars because for Canada, that's more. <laughs> yes. Right. I invested $10,000 with Bob Proctor with his program. Yeah, I remember and then, you told me. Yeah. And then I did another program with the Camilla Gornia. She's a, also a coach who teaches you how to set up your coaching business and all that. Yeah, so I did that. Cool. Then I did the DCA. Right now I'm upgrading my coaching certification. So I'm doing a coaching certification with Mind Valley. So I, oh, I since that. then, it's just been a leap, a huge yes. leap. Totally. And from the time when I used to think about buying a $20 book yeah, and look for it in the library, which I still prefer. If it is a book, I know it's a one-time read. I'd rather get it from a library just because we don't want to fill our house. Yeah, it's practical. It makes sense. It's practical, right? It's good for the, good for the environment as well. But if it's a book I know I'm going to read over and over, I don't think about it anymore. But back yeah. then I used to think, oh, $20, maybe I shouldn't invest in this book. Yeah. So coming to a point where I'm like, okay, this is the program. Do I need it? Yes. How is it going to make me grow? How is it going to help me in my next step in my journey? And then I say, okay, this is what I need and I'm going to do it. I, I love that so much. I think the intention, just like, whenever you made that mindset transition from not liking the mornings to liking them is because your meaning and the why was so much more different, right? Yeah. I have to wake up in the morning to do something I don't love. I don't like, I don't feel fulfilled. And now I have to wake up in the morning to fulfill my purpose, to help people. I mean, such a different meaning, same activity though. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. And I always used to say, this is like, my favorite thing. I hate mornings. I actually own two night shirts, uh-huh. which say I don't do mornings. <laughs> That's funny. one. And the second one said, uh, I am a monster in the morning. I had two night shirts 
<laughs> and to change my self identity, I had to get rid of those two nightshades. Yes, good job. I'm like, no, I'm not wearing this anymore because I am not this person anymore. And now I have a nightshirt which says, "I love morning." <laughs> You do incantations like Tony Robbins. I love mornings. I love yeah, mornings. right. <laughs> yes, I all I need is within me now. <laughs> Girl, I do those incantations too. Whenever I'm driving, I'm like, me too. Uh, well, what is the thing? I'm getting stronger every day in every, every way. Day in every stronger. way. I'm, yeah. yeah, and they're a so nice rhythm. I go for my walk. In yeah. summers, because I hate Canadian winters, so I hibernate. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> <laughs> so in summer, when I go for my walk, that's what I'm doing every day in every way. I'm getting better and better. <laughs> yes, I love that. Hey, words yeah. are powerful. Very powerful. Uh, so you invested in that coach. How did that transform the way you saw your path? And how did that help you to start aligning to your purpose? How, how was that for you? I think that was the biggest transformation I had with, with my coach. She helped me really. I'm a very analytical person. Yes. Even though I am very in touch with my intuition and uh, I'm now getting in touch with my spiritual side after a huge gap, because when I lost my mom, I decided there's no God, there's nothing, right? So it took me a long time to get back to connecting with my spiritual side. But coming back, I am a very analytical person and my coach was a very analytical person, I which really that. helped me. So we went very systematically personality tests and like things that she made me do the work on. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. really helped me understand what my purpose is. Where do I get my energy from? She made me do that exercise. And then there was an exercise on my values. What are my values in life? What are yes, my strengths? Yes. What are my weaknesses? All those inventories and worksheets and everything made me understand what I'm doing. So how it helped me in the big picture is that I got my focus clear. Yeah, Instead of looking at every shiny object, I was now with my blinders on saying, this is it. Coaching is what I want to do. Because I knew this was what I figured out is what gives me the most energy. I, I love that you mentioned because like a great coach, like your coach did, it meets the client where they are. And it respects also the client's model of the world, which may be different, right? Yeah. Uh, I have some mental, very mental clients and I have some that are very spiritual. So I think... Coaching is very a customized approach to every individual. So I love that you also yeah. got that experience. Yeah. Yeah. And from that, then it was just a leap. Once yes. I, I've, and what you're doing, it's such a, you're such doing such a great work because <laughs> I feel when you don't have clarity, yeah, you have all, all this time and all this energy that you are wasting on hundred things. Totally, totally. Once you get that clarity, then, you know, you take all this energy from everywhere that you were, you know, you had 10% here, 20 here, you take it all. And now your hundred percent is on that one thing. Yes. And that really was, I think the biggest investment and a very big clarity and changed my whole outlook. Oh, changed I, my I whole business, that. everything. Like after that, within six months, I was, I did my certification right away, enrolled right after talking to her, enrolled in my coaching certification, got my certification in six months. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Let's do this because coaching is very action oriented and future uh, forward looking. It's like, okay, your goals, let's do it. I'm going to help you get there. Right. So yeah. I love that so much, Sonny. I really appreciate that. I always say gaining clarity in your direction is much more important than going fast, that having speed, because you may end up going fast and arriving nowhere <laughs> if yeah. you don't have a clear direction of where you're going. So It's, it's like a GPS in your car. Yes, exactly. You know, if you don't know where you're going, what are you going to set the path for? What are you going <laughs> to put in the GPS? Are you going to just drive around and go in circles? Like, where are you going? Yeah. So you need to set those directions. Yeah. I love that. How did you, being your, your first times investing in yourself, and even now, right? Because 
I mean, I just invested in a $5,000 mastermind, right? With a, an amazing coach that I admire a lot. And I mean, she's wonderful. How the, and I still work through that. I think it's normal. How did you buy into that leap of faith and into that uncertainty that may come with your desired outcome? And, uh, and then I'm going to express what I feel. But how did okay. you work through that? <laughs> um, I believe uncertainty is a part of life. Oh, love it. And it's going to keep coming back. Yes. You know, every time you're doing something new, you're trying something, you're doing something that's out of your comfort zone, you're mm-hmm. going to face that uncertainty. Yeah. So once I got clarity on the coaching, of course, now the new uncertainty was what kind of coach am I going to? Be? <laughs> yeah. There's like a million and I started researching and there's like a million different kinds of coaching. And I'm like, oh, what do I want to do? So that was the next step, next uncertainty. So I said, okay, well, let's do a coaching certification. As I started doing the certification, I would do practice sessions. And in those practice sessions, I kind of knew, no, this is not the client I wanted to work with. This is something I enjoyed. Oh, their problem with the relationship course, one of the practice sessions, there was a relationship. I'm like, no, that's not my comfort zone. Right. But then there was someone else who was self-image and all. And I'm, I kind of started getting that clarity. So sometimes, you know, even though you have the uncertainty, you just have to look at that one next step. Yeah. I always compare it like driving in the dark. Yeah. So you know that three years back, right before the pandemic, we sold everything we owned and we moved to Costa Rica. Yes. And one night I was driving and I was scared of driving in Costa Rica. <laughs> so there was this I would dark. Do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on this dark road, no lights on the highway, single lane highway. There's big trucks coming from the front and I'm driving and I barely can see anything. It's pouring, it's raining. So, you know, like all this and all I kept telling myself, my son was with me and he wanted to talk. And I said, mama needs to focus. He knows that I get stressed when I'm driving, especially yeah. there. I said, mama needs to focus. Stop talking to me right now. I put some music on and I kept telling myself, only look how far my light is showing me. Ooh, you know, just I like that. Right? Like one small step. Okay, my light, my headlights of my car are showing me this much. Only focus on that. Yeah. As I keep going further, my headlights keep showing me further and further and further. And I keep getting clarity and clarity and clarity, but I'm just focusing on that one point. I can only see this far, so I'm going to focus on that. And I think that always gives, this analogy always works in my mind so well that, you know, uncertainty is going to be there. Just take that one small step, one next step, and that will open more pathways. That will give you more clarity. That's beautiful, Sonny. And I mean, what also helps me is the certainty on the work I'm going to put in, right? Because honestly, what you put in, you get out. It happens with coaching. It happens with courses. It happens with trainings. It happens with certifications. So there was a moment in my life where I would buy a $5,000 mentorship program and I wouldn't do anything about it, right? But (laughs) yeah, during the journey, something clicked and it was mainly after a breakthrough session using like neuro-linguistic programming techniques that I started to take my business a lot more seriously because of course I had my North Star and what I'm doing right now, it has always been my North Star. And I just started after that really putting effort into applying all the concepts, not only learning and listening, but showing up, applying it. And that certainty of, I don't know what the outcome might be, but I'm going to give my 100% because I'm committed to the process. I think that also helps me uh, as I continue investing myself for sure. I, I totally agree with that. You know, what you just said that, you know, As you go, you're getting the clarity, but marry the process. Divorce the outcome and marry the process. Yes, yes, yes. And experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment as you go forward. Like Sonny has done and I have done. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) What would you say about naysayers or, you know, like your husband has been super supportive. I mean, I have a super supportive family. 
what would you say to those people that are like, man, I can invest on that. I have the means I'm ready to go. And then they socialize it with someone and people are like, oh my God, are you crazy? Investing in yourself. You can figure that out by yourself. <laughs> we hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have had my share of nays- naysayers. Oh my, my God. Tell, tell us about it. How have you dealt with that? <laughs> I def- from the point when I wanted to quit my job, like I had everyone, why would you do that? You have a secure job. So my last job, I was working for the federal government and I had benefits and I had a retirement fund and I had everything. Um, I just wasn't happy. And they're like, oh, why would you quit your job? You're secure. You get your monthly, you know, stop. Don't do that. Some people said, okay, just do part-time. Don't quit. Do part-time yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. And whatever you want to do, do that part-time on the other side. And it was a very hard decision because what happens when you talk to too many people, I was reading uh, um, Think and Grow Rich and the chapter on decision-making. Yeah. And uh, Napoleon Hill talks about it. Don't tell your plan to everyone. Tell it to those people who support you. And I just recorded a reel on that yesterday. It's in my native language, but that's exactly what I said. Don't tell your goals, your plans to those who are jealous or who are going to judge you. Tell Mm -hmm. it to those who are going to support you and lift you up. So over the time, I now know who are the people who are going to support me and who is the person who's not. Exactly. And they come from a place of protection. Yes. yes, I'm not saying they definitely come from a place of love. They they care about you. They want to protect you from heartbreak or from failure or whatever. But it's their perspective exactly their life experiences their history not your story right so the one way I have definitely one thing I have done is that I now kind of have my people that I know will always support me and cheer me on the other thing I have done is that I don't tell my plans to everyone because if I tell it to them they are going to plant a seed of doubt Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do the same. And, right. <laughs> and that seed of doubt is then going to grow into a tree and I'm not I'm going to be stuck in inaction. Mm-hmm. But don't tell it to everyone. Yeah. So I think like if you really know what you want in life, then just put those blinders on. Don't listen to naysayers. They're always going to have an opinion about your life. But uh, there's that quote. Um, oh, whose quote is that? Well, there's that quote that don't take opinion from the people sitting in cheap seats. Oh, my God. I so love it because think- I was thinking the same. I'm like, yeah. if you are investing yourself or planning to, why would you take opinions to someone who has not invested in themselves? So exactly. They are not going to understand. <laughs> yeah. So I think the quote is like, don't let those sitting in cheap seats have an expensive opinion on your life. Ooh, and I, I wish like I knew that. who said that, but... There's that one. And then there's that other really, really big, famous quote. And I always forget the people. No worries. The quotes stick with me is that the credit belongs to the person who is in the battlefield. Brené Brown says it from Roosevelt. I think. Yes, from Roosevelt. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay. You know, the person whose face is marred with sweat and tears and blood and who's actually fighting in the arena not the person who's standing outside watching. I got so chills When you that. listen to a naysayer, ask yourself one question. Have they done something like that in their life before? Because if they've never done it, how would they know? They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know what it feels like to invest in yourself or what it feels like to run your own business or anything like that. Wow, so I got chills really from that. Me. Yeah. So initially, you know, I used to ask everyone and I used to doubt and so many opportunities came that I did not take because I listened to others. But now I'm like, no, I know what I want. I discuss it with my husband, who's my biggest cheerleader, and I move on. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, that reminds me of a quote my my uncle said to me. He has been a very influential person in my life. He died last year of cancer and that completely shifted my brain of like, there is no time. This is the only time we have. So he told me, do not believe anyone else's experiences. Believe your own. Believe your own experience. And this is something I tell my coaching clients. Don't believe me. Let's test what we did here and let's see how it works out after the session, right? 
Well, yeah. leave your own experience. That Such is a so powerful. powerful thing. So powerful, yeah. And I'm like, I mean, that's how I've made the decisions I've made. I made it in my mind and then I communicate externally when I've made it. And of course, my fiance is super supportive, my mom. So I do talk to them because, I mean, they get affected by the decisions I make too. So I think it's really yeah. important. Yeah. And, but I make the decision first here and in my mind <laughs> and then I communicate it. That's it. That's the only way where you can live a purpose driven life too. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Sonny, I'm so pumped. This is an amazing episode. I've enjoyed it so much. You have so much wisdom. I love your analogies. Thank you. (laughs) Everything about you. Um, We have talked, I mean, about everything and even more than what I was planning to talk and ask you about. I have... I started, actually, this is the second interview that I do it. I'm finishing my interviews with the rapid fire questions. I do them yeah. all, too. Oh, I love them. I do them on my Oh, my God, podcast, I love it. <laughs> and I've never been on the other end, so this is scary. Let's do okay, this. Okay, <laughs> just say the same. The first thing that comes to mind, that's <laughs> it, right? <laughs> and I just made these questions up, of course, as you know. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, what's your favorite book? Who? Brady Brown's Gifts of Imperfection. Oh, I have to read that one. I haven't yet. Oh, He's, it's I uh, love, love, love it. It's, it's by my bedside table. I keep it has little sticky notes everywhere on it. And yeah. And it goes with your brand, so it's perfect. Yeah. Cool. Describe yourself in one word. Sunshine. Ah, I love it. Uh, what are you the most proud of? The first thing that comes to mind. The life I have created for myself, even after all that I have been through and the ability to pick myself up over and over. And again, it comes back to my childhood. Um, You know, sometimes situations, circumstances are out of your hand, but it's in your own hand to pick yourself up and move on. Oh, I love it. Staying resilient all the way. That's beautiful, Sonny. What's your favorite part of being an entrepreneur? I think you answered that one. I, I want to say wake up late, but I don't wake up late anymore. <laughs> That's your old programming. That doesn't That's make sense That's my anymore. old programming. Um, the time, I think the time freedom, doing like things really on my freedom. own time, on my own terms. That's true. What's the best piece of advice someone else has ever given to you? Oh, that's a tough one. I think my husband, when he said, follow your heart and don't worry about well, it was not very like court or whatever. It was more like <laughs> more like a conversation. And then he said, just follow your heart, do it. Don't worry about the expenses. We'll figure it out. We've been in the worst place before and we figured it out. So, you know, losing that one income, it's not going to be a big deal. But just when he said those words, we were on our flight back from Vegas and I was crying because I didn't want to go back to work the next day. And on the flight, he said, pick a date when you're quitting. And follow your heart. And I think that was the, that was the biggest advice. And I would give that advice to anyone. Just, you know, Uh, listen to your heart. I've gotten chills in several parts of this interview. And right now was another one. (laughs) (laughs) Because I mean, Cody also says that follow your heart. And I'm like, wow, that's something that before him, I don't think no one has ever told me like that. Follow your heart. He's like, how often do you get that? I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And it's such a simple advice. Yeah. It's kind of become a cliche. You yeah. hear it all the time, but no one really, I shouldn't say no one, a lot of people don't really follow their heart because they're stuck in the rules. As Vishen Lakhiani says, rules of society, rules of society. Yes. We're stuck in those that I need to have this kind of a house that white picket fence and all that stuff. And we forget to live, forget to do small things that make us happy. That's such a beautiful way to conclude this interview. Sonny, I'm so inspired. Ooh, how did I do on oh that? Oh my God, you did amazing. <laughs> I'm so inspired to 
take on my day, my week and everything else before my Thank wedding. Thank you. I am so, so inspired by you every day. Oh, same Can here. You? Yeah. Same here, Sonny. I'm so, I'm so grateful more than anything that we have connected, that we share similar minds and that, that we are helping people own their light, right? Because the light is inside them already. It's to remember that it has been there the whole way. <laughs> yeah, they just have to brighten it up. Just kind of, you know, that light has been dimmed by the world and they just need to like brighten it up again. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I want everyone to connect with you. Okay. Because you're amazing. How can they connect with you? Your Instagram, your podcast, your us about it. So my podcast is on all major platforms, Flaw Authentic Me. My website, again, very simple, www.flawauthenticme.com. Or they can find me on Instagram with my name, Sunny underscore Lamba beautiful easy. thank you <laughs> easy easy i love it simple let it be easy okay my friend thank you so much thank you to all the listeners i hope you follow sonny get to connect with her and then we'll see you next week thank you sonny thank you for having me thank you so much for listening at with clarity and purpose i really hope you enjoyed today's episode Sharing is caring. Please share with your friends and family so we can continue building an empowered community together. I'll see you next week.